What is up and welcome back everyone. Today is the day I know a lot of you have been waiting for. Today is the day we finally get to put new off-road tires on my Subaru Forester. So we're going with something pretty aggressive. Um, I know the common trend is 215s. Um, we're doing a 225 and we're doing it on some really, really cool tires. We're actually doing it on some beadlocks that are, as far as I know, the first beadlocks ever made for this kind of car and this kind of setup. So it's gonna be cool to go ahead and put these on the Forcer and then go ahead and try them out. To go in a little more detail of exactly what we're putting on the Forcer, it's the Black Rhino gravel beadlock wheels and then we're going with a Toyo Tire Open Country 3 or AT3. And while it's not the most extreme setup like I could go a full mud tire, I think it provides a pretty good balance for what we're doing with the Forcer and what I plan to do in the future. Even though I said it's not the most aggressive setup, we are putting beadlocks on a Subaru Forcer so maybe it is a little more aggressive than standard. And the great thing about these being beadlocks is what you can do is you can actually go ahead and install the tires on the rim by yourself. I mean, it's essentially just you push them over and they pop right on. And then since you don't got to get that other lip um, or around on the bead, you can actually go ahead and just seat it um, on the front. You put the rim or the outer edge on it and then you go ahead and you bolt it up and you um, torque it to spec. That's a big thing. Bead locks are kind of sketchy because of that because you're always making, want to make sure you have enough torque on those bolts because if you don't, the bead or the thing locking the bead actually can let the bead go and it gets a little bit sketchy. But anyways, that is pretty much the specs and as you can tell, it's a little bit bigger than normal. Um, bigger than what most people put on the Forcer and that might have some challenges. I'm not 100% sure. I've only put these beside the car before. I've never actually put them on yet. So you're going to be joining me on putting these on my Forcer. And with that being said, I think we're going to start with the rear tires because I think they're going to require the least amount of work. Um, my only concern is because we don't have trailing arm spacers yet, that this front little section here might catch. Um, I measured and we're gonna be very, very close. So what we gotta do is lift up the car and go ahead and try it out. So that is a super aggressive wheel um, and just as I thought we have a little bit of a rubbing issue right on the front. Um, especially when it goes full droop it actually makes full contact. Um, but we have that one little lip there that I'm going to actually go ahead and trim out. We're going to just chop this off and then I might actually go ahead and just shape this a little bit um, more. And then what we'll do is do that on the other side too and we can get these rear tires on and mounted. And with a little bit of angle grinding and um, a little bit of paint, there we go. We have it all clearance, and it's essentially up to that metal point now. It's not 100% perfect, but if you look, we should have pretty much as much clearance as we're going to get. And that should be enough to at least be able to put the tire on and drive it. Um, I don't know about full droop, we still probably will need the trailing arm brackets. And just like that, we have the tire on, and check it out, we got clearance at full droop. So, removing that little bit of plastic definitely helped. Um, I wouldn't say it's a lot of clearance, but it's enough clearance that I would feel comfortable off-roading this and going to full droop and it wouldn't be, like, rubbing. And if it does, it can self-clearance itself. So what I did is I went ahead and got this tire on, and I actually went ahead and also went to the other side and did this side too, it's kind of hard for you guys to see. But with that being said, now that we got both sides on, on the back, we can go ahead and drop it down and see what it looks like with both tires on. And there we go. We have the tires on and the car is lowered down. Look it, we have even more clearance. And by more clearance I mean like <laughs> millimeters, but it really fills in the um, wheel well um, perfectly so that's really what we we're looking for and if we look from over here if we kind of take a step back <laughs> old new so we might have some clearance issues with the front so that's what we're gonna have to tackle next but it looks a hundred times more aggressive with those new wheels can't wait to actually go ahead and try them on the trail I can still get two fingers behind the tire. 
that's actually not as bad as I was expecting. Yeah, it's hitting. <laughs> so time to fold the pinch fold. So once you remove that clip, that clip, that clip, and then I have mud flaps, so I had to remove all these bolts. You can go ahead and pull back the fender liner to find this pinch weld. This is what's in our way. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to fold this back that way. So I think the best way is putting some relief cuts in um, and then going ahead and bashing it with a hammer. I'm going to try to leave this point here for the fender liner to clip back in. So it's essentially everything here and downwards is going to be folded in. After getting the fender liner out of the way, it was time to take the hammer to the car. The main focus was getting the pinch weld flat with the wheel tub so that it wouldn't interfere with the tire. Little did I know it was going to require a little more than just folding the pinch weld. After bashing in the pinch weld, I moved my focus to the tub itself. I had to go ahead and push in the whole intersection of the tub so that it wouldn't rub when I turned the wheel. Once that was done, it was time to put the tire back on and check the clearance. Which I still didn't have. So I went ahead and repeated the process once again till I could turn the car lock to lock on the ground with no rub. But the job wasn't over yet. After all, I removed all the paint from any surface that I hit. So I proceeded to put a layer of rocker guard back on it. With the pinch weld folded and the tubs fixed, it was time to target the fender liner, which, after a little heat and some self-tappers, went right into place. And finally, after cutting the excess fender liner, it was time to hack up the mud flap and get those back on. After a lot of bashing, cutting, bashing, cutting, testing, dropping, testing, we finally have it on the car. We have the front wheel on there. Um, I think it's to a point where it's drivable. It might not be off-roadable in the sense that if I do anything really um, off-centered, it might actually bring the wheel up and then if I turn it too much, it might start to rub. Um, I knew this was going to be a problem coming into this because the STI, um, the JDM STIs, or the JDM um, Foresters and the STIs have a better lower control arm that actually has a lot more caster and brings it forwards um, when you turn. So that's probably something I'm gonna have to end up doing um, when I really start pushing this car because that is a little bit sketchy when it turns. It actually brings it right into there. Um, I also, as you guys saw, cut the mud flap and did, just did a lot of modifying overall. Okay, so let's recap exactly what I did. Starting from the bottom, we cut the um, front mud flaps because, well, they were just rubbing um, way too much. So we cut those, we removed a mounting point up here, and then we made our own mounting point by gluing a bolt. Um, I just got some plastic there holding it while the glue is settling. And then we cut and folded the pinch welds, or we didn't cut the pinch welds, we folded the pinch welds just with a really heavy hammer. And then we put some self-tappers in, yeah, I use self-tappers, with some really big washers to hold the fender liner itself back after hitting it with a hot air gun. And then we essentially fold it all the way up to this point right here. This is where I think we're going to have issues if we really start to get it to flex. It's going to rub here. Eventually, I think it would be good just to level this out again, um, just as we did down below. But for the time being, it is good to go. And then we put all new clips in. And then on the front, because we don't have a bumper, we didn't really need to cut anything, did put a new clip here in. And then I also went and actually zip-tied my... Um, fender liner in here so it's not going to go fly away when we're on the highway. So with that being said and this car technically being done and fitting these tires, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, put the front ones on, um, torque down the um, lug nuts and go for a drive and I think I have one spot that I want to go try and just see how much I can actually flex the car. Well there we go, the wheels are all on and we've torqued the lug nets. I've also checked the torque on the bead lockers because you know I'm super sketched out I'm about bead locks even though as long as you make sure you to maintain them you're good to go. So I think today or right now is time to go test it. I know where I can kind of get a little bit of flex in the car um, so we're gonna go do that 
I am noticing a little bit of rubbing on the front at full lock, as I said, but it's just plastic at this point, so it's gonna self-clearance, so it's all good. But I definitely need those SCI lower control arms because bring it just even that much, we'd be good to go. So there we go, it's flexed out in the front, or well, as much as I can with this curb. Um, with these wheels, it makes the curb look a lot smaller than it was with the stock wheels, but there we go, we have it kind of, kind of loaded up in the front. Um, if we take a look here, we are so close to rubbing, but we're not, like, check that out. That is um, um, clearance, if I ever say so. And then, also I'm checking on these nubs on the tires, and I haven't seen them just get completely wore away, so that's always good. And then in the back, we're really pushing our clearance right here because we have no trailing arms, but we're good. Um, and this is pretty much full droop, I would have to say. And holy, it looks so good. And then if we come back here, you can see that it fills the wheel well really well. Um, and that's really all I have to say there. No rubbing because as the trailing arm moves up, it moves back. And then on the front, because we're essentially in droop, um, there is no problem with clearance like right here in the mud flap area. We are clear, so that's good to go. And then backed in, it's definitely tucking this wheel a little bit, but same thing with the other one. We, um, because it trailing arm comes up, we are actually got more clearance. Here, full droop, it is perfectly fine. And then on this side, as you can see, it's pretty tucked in there. Um, you wouldn't want to turn it too sharp like that. you are definitely be rubbing a little bit, but right now, as you can see, no rubbing. So definitely a little, little close, but not too bad. And then here is full droop. So lots of clearance. Or well, lots is a subjective term, but some clearance. Well, there we go. We now have our off-road, all-terrain tires on the Forester. And holy, they look amazing. They um, definitely are pushing the limits of what I should be doing on this setup. As I said, I guess I could lift it um, some more, but then we're pushing the CV axles. Um, so the main thing is really just that STI lower control arm on the front, just because, well, it gives us a little more caster and allows us to push that front wheel just a little more forward so we're not rubbing as much. So that's really the only thing left on this Forester. Um, right now I'm at the point where I think it's time to just enjoy it. I do have some plans for the far, farther future, um, but right now I think it's time to just go ahead, go on some adventures and enjoy it. I know Adrian and Austin are definitely um, wanting to go, so we definitely have to go test this out and see how far we can get with this current setup. But there we go, today we've installed Black Rhino um, gravel bead locks um, on the 2004 Subaru Forester, so that is going to be it and that is going to be all, so as always, peace out and stay humble. <laughs>